Hello, hello, good afternoon. Hello, hello, good afternoon. Hello, good morning from Colombia. Good morning. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everyone. How are you? Fine. Here, it's quite hello. cold over here. Hello, how are you all? Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. Well, Sylvia, what do you think? Shall we start? Yeah, let's go. I think everyone's here. Yeah, there's 30 of us here. So go ahead, Anna. So please, can you mute your microphone? Someone has the microphone open. So thank you. So good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for participating in this new online session of Plena Internacional. For those of you who are new, Plena Internacional is a Plena Inclusion project. We work, we do it in collaboration with Inclusion International, where we and we try to promote the participation of people with disabilities from all over the world. These sessions are a place in which to share experiences and learn about new topics. Please remember that we have interpretation into English, Portuguese, French and Spanish. If you need to connect the interpretation, you must click that uh, little world symbol that appears on the screen at the bottom. There, you can choose the language in which you want to listen the session into. In this session, we are going to talk about inclusive health. We are going to present... We're, we're going to do, have a presentation about health in the convention. The Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities is an international agreement that countries that sign must comply with. The objective of this convention is to protect the rights and dignity of people with disabilities. The convention recognizes that people with disabilities have the right to enjoy the health and well being of their families and communities, their own. Health. Can you go back to the one before, please? Thank you. People with disabilities have the right to enjoy health. But sometimes, well, this is why countries must provide them with health care. Health care must be free or very affordable. It should be comprehensive, it should include sexual health care, and it should be provided close to where people with disabilities live. Sorry.
Anna, can you all hear me? Yeah, perfectly. Sorry, I just got this thing on the screen, but no worries. Okay. So it is also important to ensure that doctors and nurses care for people with disabilities as they care for other people. Therefore, these people must be informed about their health and they must uh, accept the treatments that they need. Health insurance should be the same for everyone, including, of course, people with disabilities. In Spain, there was a research conducted on health, on the health of people with disability, intellectual disabilities. It was called Pomona study. People with intellectual disabilities took more medicines than other people. They also used more hospital emergency services. There were more people with intellectual disabilities with dental problems, constipation, or epilepsy. Few women with intellectual disabilities went to the gynecologist. This research is available in Easy Read. In Spain, there are uh, many easy to read documents on health. Does anybody have a question? Any questions? So thank you so much. Nobody has a question. No, everything was really, really well explained. Thank you, Paula. Okay, so let's continue. Now, Mark is going to introduce us to two colleagues from Zambia. Go ahead, Mark. Maybe he has some connection problems. Yeah, he went out and then he's coming back. Shall we wait? Yes, he's joining. I have some internet connection problems also. Mark? He still has some problems. So, well, I will introduce them. Maybe he will let us know when he... Here he is. Mark. Go ahead. You can introduce our colleagues from Zambia. Mark, you have the floor. You can introduce our colleagues from Zambia. Thank you very much. Uh, now we are going to have a presentation from our colleagues from Zambia, where they share the experience uh when it comes to inclusive health so yeah our colleagues from zambia on inclusive health as we are with you share the slide do you have it to share on the screen
Yes, go ahead. Can, can you, will you able to share it on the screen, the presentation? Okay. Sorry, just one second. There it is. Presentación so uh, oh, are you available to present? Uh, hello. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, we can. Yeah, you can start. Yes, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ruthi Chihana, a software worker from Zambia. I am a messy person with intellectual disability, a software worker who is attended by Mr. Mark. Today, I'm going to present on access to healthcare by person with intellectual with disability. We are supposed to be doing with my colleague, but she is not around. From Friendly Band Development Foundation Organization. Purpose for this meeting, I shall talk about health care for persons with intellectual disabilities in Zambia, especially in the rural areas. The importance of this presentation is that our friends in the rural communities often report that not getting the health care they need during our advocacy meetings. Next slide. Our experience after advocacy meetings with our colleagues, meetings with health workers in the Kasama district. My experience as a self-advocate after advocacy training, nurses, doctors, and the community health workers are now more supportive of us, people with intellectual disabilities. Access to health information. Current situation, we often have trouble getting health information. It is hard for us to understand what doctor and the nurses say. In areas where we have shared our advocate message, things are slowly getting better because of our advocates. In places we have not reached yet, radio, phone, in programs, sure there are still many problems which are facing by persons with intellectual disabilities. Changes. Nurses and the doctors may not know how to talk to us people with intellectual disabilities. And the health information is usually too hard to understand. <clears throat> After advocacy, Health workers understand and treat us with respect and dignity. Challenges is that this happens only in some areas where we have reached because there are not many self advocates in Zambia. Next slide, please. 
as myself say those the impact this statement. The the good changes we have seen in Kasama show how advocacy can make health care better for pe- people with intellectual disability. We have not not more respect, better communication and the right services being provided. Our success in Kasama show what show what can happen when healthy workers and advocates work together. As my colleague said, it's not around her testimonies that I have one on one time with the doctors now, and they spend more time with me. They listen to what I have to say and they make sure I get the right treatment. Next slide, Yeah, we can hear you. Mm-hmm. Can you go up once, maybe? One more. Up, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're on slide number what?
You want to say something about it? Is it true? Are you going to say something about that? Are you there alone? Lord? Ruth, are you there? Are you there? Yes, are you there? Nine? Okay. Please, can you go slide number nine? Yeah, continue there. Yes, we hear you. Can you hear us? Uh, Rosie, can I sing it for you? Okay, before.
Yeah, good thing. Yeah, good thing you can hear you. Thank you very much, Adolf, uh, for that presentation. I will give back to Anna. Can you hear me? So now we're going to see some videos from Benin, Ethiopia, Mexico, Malawi. They will speak to us about their experiences when they have to go to the doctor, to the hospital. In the first video, they talk about uh, disabilities. Can you hear me? Thank you, Sylvia. What? Uh, just to add as uh, you share in the screen. Uh, are you able, able to do the video?
thank you very much to everyone who's watching these videos and also to everyone who participated in these videos to Fernanda to, to, to everyone that that participated in that. Now we're going to see another video that talks about privacy and confidentiality. When we go to health services. Thank you, Sylvia.
Lastly, we will see this video in which various people will talk about the informed consent. We all have the right to know what kind of tests we are, will be subjected to, and this information should be accessible.
Thank you. Thank you, everybody who participated in this videos. I hope you found them interesting. What do you think? Should we now move on to the questions? To the questions we sent you? Is that okay? I'll remind them. Do you have access to health information? And do you get support from doctors or nurses without any problem? Yep. 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 Every time. Can you please repeat the question, please? Okay, please raise your hand if you want to speak. Do you have access to health information and do you get support from doctors and nurses without any problem? You can start to speak. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Well, when I go to the doctor, sorry, it is hard to go in with my support person because the doctors usually don't let me in with the support person because they can't see my disability and they say I don't have a disability, so they don't let the support person in. So many, there are many times I have to tell them I need my support person because then they speak and they use a terminology that I don't understand. And it is only when I go in with my support person that I don't have problems. But sometimes I do have problems when they explain things to me. Because, for example, recently uh, they gave me a new medication and they didn't explain correctly. Sorry. And they didn't explain correctly that what what type of medication it was and how I was meant to take it. So I didn't take it. I didn't take it. And then my mother explained to me how I should take it. And so doctors don't have a uh, patient, so they don't know how to explain things correctly. This is uh, what I wanted to share with all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. Stephanie, you have the floor. Estrella, can you mute? Stephanie, you have the floor. Go ahead. Well, here in Brazil, I here in Brazil the uh, there's some in health centers there's something I frequently see and is that frequently there are the doctors don't have good communication practices. So it's very, very hard to get good, a good service because here in Brazil, for example, uh, if you need to, for example, in order to get to get, go to the room there is a little noise that you must hear and if you are deaf you don't hear the noise so it is complicated for example you need to and I, I was there for example and after a while some things have improved but uh, with intellectual disability, sometimes it's very hard because it's not so visible, so it's hard. Sometimes they ask if we have support persons, for example, 
uh, once I went to the doctor, I had a headache and the doctor only spoke with the support person. He didn't speak to me and I told him, well, I have a disability, but I take my own decisions. So there it was the doctor that said, okay, I'm going to speak directly to you. But I, I wasted a lot of time because at the beginning, the doctor didn't speak to me directly. He spoke directly with the support person. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. And you're completely right. Juanjo, you have the floor. Yeah, thank you. Well, I also want to share an experience and it is that in general, I haven't had too much, too many problems when speaking to the doctors, but normally when I go to the doctor, I go with my support person or with my parents. And, but once when I went to the doctor, it, was, it wasn't so long ago, I went to the doctor and the doctor was always speaking directly to my father. So if there's a support person, the doctor speaks directly to the support person. And uh, this is a problem they must speak to the patient, to Juan Jose in this case, to me. So that day, that day that I went to the doctor, I was wearing my glasses and while the doctor was speaking to my Father, I he, I told the doctor, why don't you speak to me directly? And then my father told me, okay, take your glasses off and take your mask off because I was wearing a sanitary mask. And at that moment, the doctor uh, shut up and then he looked at me and he continued speaking to us. Well, that was what happened that day. So, yeah, that was what happened that day. That was, uh, that was in fact, uh, some time ago. Thank you. Thank you, Juanjo. Gabriel, go ahead. Up the floor. Luis Gabriel. So oh, I think he has some connection problems. Okay, well, I'll tell you about my experience. My experience here in Spain is that I always go on my own because I don't have a support person. So I always go alone to the doctor. And what I usually ask uh, him or her is to give me a written report so that I can afterwards show it to my support person. And sometimes they don't want to give me this written report. And uh, there is a problem here. They, they do write everything that has to do with medicines. And what I ask them is, I ask them sometimes to call my support person directly, but sometimes they don't want to call them. So for example, once I went to the doctor and I had to take a very, very important decision and, and they called my parents directly, telling them that I had a very several uh, disease and that they had to go there immediately, but I was already and it was like uh, Stephanie and Fernanda uh, they don't see that I the um, disability sometimes is not visible so uh, when they didn't let me take my decision and they called directly my parents and I was already an adult well in fact they told my parents that I was pregnant that and it was a lie so my parents 
arrived directly to the health center. They were very nervous. And in fact, they told them before doing the appropriate tests. And I told my parents, well, it is impossible. I already know what I did, so it was impossible. So um, doctors didn't believe me, and then they did a test, and that they saw I wasn't pregnant, that in fact it was another problem. But they had told my parents that I was pregnant, and I was already an adult, and they should have told me directly. They should have spoken to, uh, directly to me and the consequences of whatever happened. So, well, Luis Gabriel, are you there? Oh, he's not here. Okay, well, let's continue. So is your medical information private? And do you have the possibility to see your nurse or doctor alone if you want privacy? Is your medical information private? And do you have the possibility to see your nurse or doctor alone if you want privacy? For example, if you go with your support person or uh, someone from your family, can you ask the doctor that you want him to just explain it to you? Yes, I can go with my support person and I usually ask the doctor For the gynecologist, I ask her to explain it to me. But you, do you have privacy? Or does your support person listen to everything? No, I, I am accompanied. I, I go with my company. Okay, Sh Sherry, go ahead. You have the floor. Sherry? Okay, thank another. you. Uh, question two, answers. The doctors and nurses have always respected me as a person and provided me with privacy when I need it. Thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. Fernanda, you wanted to speak? Yes. Well, about this last question, if I go alone, uh, uh, do I get a chance to receive uh, information uh, with privacy? For example, if I have to speak about sexuality or something like that. Well, yes, if I decide to go alone to the doctor, yes, I, I can. But if you go with your mother and then speak alone with a doctor, yes. In fact, generally I go with my mother so that they explain everything to her also. For example, now I'm going to the gynecologist and my mother usually comes with me so that the doctor can explain the treatment to her. But then if I want to be alone to ask a private uh, consultation, my mother goes out and I get some privacy with the gynecologist. Thank you. Thank you, Fernanda. Luis Gabriel, are you there? You have the floor. Yes, yeah, sorry, my connection failed. Can you repeat the question? Yes. Is your medical information private and do you have the possibility to see your nurse or doctor alone if you want privacy? Yes. And I also have the support of my uh, family. Well, in fact, I have a, tr a very a relation of trust with my doctor and I receive uh, a really good treatment. I have a support person who is my mother. So we have a, a relation of trust with my family. Very, very easy. It is very easy. In fact, I usually explain what happens. And if I have any question, she explains them to me. She examines me with a really good treatment. I spoke to her about my experience as a self-advocate and she respects me as a person also and gives me equal treatment. Uh, so this way it 
Uh, this is what I wanted to share with you. Does it help? Yes, thank you. Ganoi, Chantal, you have the floor. And just one more thing. We have some difficulties. Well, I also have some difficulties because sometimes I have to renew my uh, my sanitary card and if I don't do it on time there I have problems and uh, this is something we're fighting for I I have to do this personally and I have to pay this and this is this is basically the challenge I have thank you Ganawi Chantal Ganawi you have the floor Hmm, I don't know if she's there. Ganoi, Chantal. Ganoi, Chantal. Oh, maybe we were not saying her name correctly. Ganoi, Chantal. Chantal. Ganoi, Ganoi, okay. And for example, with doctors, I have a problem now, and it is that I don't feel pain unless it's really, really strong. So, and as I always go alone, they always tell me, how come you came in this situation? Why didn't you come before? Now they uh, they have explained this to me by my support person or other people that know me. They remind me that I have to go be for the pain is so so high because i don't usually perceive so the pain until it's really really strong so whenever i go to the doctor they they don't they say things to me basically uh, as i go alone i like i like them to explain everything to me i like to know what what type of tests they are going to do and it is really hard to get explanations for example i remember that they were going to do a special text test uh, and mri and uh, i have claustrophobia and I, if they don't explain it correctly um well, it's really hard. Now, Ruth, Ruth, the, Ruth, you have the floor. Chantal, Ganoui. Yes, because of my yeah. empower from Cruise International become me. And advocacy, it helped me to have some privacy because I understand that I have rights. Okay, so let's continue with the next question and the and. If she comes back, we'll give her the word, the floor back. Next question. When we speak about sexual and reproductive health, Please. Okay. When I go to the doctor, and when I tell them my uh, when I want to speak about sexual thing, there is a problem that 
Chantal and Ruth are speaking at the same time. Go ahead. Hello. She says that when she goes to the hospital, she has access to information on sexual issues and can easily exchange or share even though there's someone else with her because it's difficult for her to move somewhere. She has problem, uh, movement issues, mobility issues. It's hard for her to gesticulate. And so she needs another person there in order to help her explain clearly to the doctor uh, what she wants to say so that the doctor understands what she's saying. Thank you. Thank you. So now I'll repeat the question, Sylvia. How are we doing on time? We have 22 minutes more, so we're okay. Okay, so I'll ask the same question again. I'll repeat it. With regarding to uh, sexual and reproductive health, do they provide you adequate information when you ask? Or, or uh, contraceptive methods and sufficient explanation of how to use them? I will pass the floor. So, Luis, go ahead. Thank you, Anna. Here, what we have in our organization, we've worked a lot with in favor of the family and also on sexual and reproductive rights. We've done training as uh, multipliers of sexual and reproductive rights, how to use condoms and other anti-conceptive devices and, and methods and uh, protection against sexually transmitted diseases. Is someone, I'm hearing different voices. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. We've also uh, developed uh, pamphlets for easy reading pamphlets on how to use them. Thank you, Sharif. You have the floor now. Uh, thank you. My um, answer from, from from question three is: I am not she 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 active, and my mother and doctor has has answered all my reproductive questions. As the questions as the questions arose, I also trust my doctor with any questions. Thank you. I'll give you an example. This has nothing to do, but for example, something that I thought was relevant is that I was given some pills, but the pill in principle, they gave it to me for something else. But in principle, it's also an anti-conceptive method. And I was surprised at the fact that they give them to you, but they don't explain the possible consequences of these medications. So they should explain to you also the consequences that can arise from this. From that, I had another problem that was derived from those pills. Can you say it? Because of the hormones that those pills carry. Exactly, yeah because of the hormonal components that those pills have. So they need to explain to us these anti methods, but also the consequences of their use. 
if you take them, you need to have the adequate information about it. Does anyone have any further responses? Estrella, go ahead. I was given obvious because I have urine, urinary tract infections and the gynecologist would give me and they explained what this was for. And for example, here, for example, when I go to the gynecologist, the last time I went, I don't want they were supposed to do a ultrasound and they always cause problems because their problem is that they give me long appointments and they have to give me earlier appointments and I try to explain that but they don't understand me I say that they have to because they'll, sometimes they say urgent or normal and and they won't give you on or uh, right pre uh, preferred but they don't explain they don't give you the date you need and so there are problems with that also for me the gynecologists or the matron because i'm getting uh heat flashes from menopause and for example i have an appointment in 2025 here in spain after a certain age one has to do a mammogram i have to do the mammogram because my mother had cancer Sylvia, could you turn off? Someone has their microphone on. Could you turn that off? I thought it was funny because I didn't know this is a this this test it's pretty unpleasant right yeah they put your breast wait Estrella, wait and they don't really explain to you what it's going to be like they you have to stand sort of on one side and then they take your other breast Estrella. So for example, they give you the results, but I was frightened because they don't explain the test. And then I got the results and they suddenly call you saying that you have to go quickly. Because they don't explain to you, they didn't explain to me the next uh, test that I had to do. They call you and they t to tell you, uh, I'm not sure how to explain this, but maybe, maybe someone else can, maybe Sylvia, you can explain it before. They told you that you had to do further testing but they didn't explain exactly why you had to do those tests. And they put you in a room with other people like you. And then people come out crying because of their results. And you don't know why.
Edu, I'm going to give you the floor. What they don't do is explain to you the procedure that they're going to do. Instead of explaining, that's it's very uh, frightening to be in a room where you don't know what's going to happen. And you don't know what they're going to do. And then people are coming out that are upset and you might have to wait for two hours there and nobody explains anything to you. I, I just can't understand that. Anyone else? Did anyone else want to speak? Anna, there's a message in the chat from Juanjo. Okay. I don't see it. Hang on, I'll I'll read it out loud. Do you see it? He says, in general, I haven't had any problems with the doctor until now, but in all of my medical appointments, they always talk to me very respectfully and very patiently. They explain to me how I should take medicine or when I'm going to the pharmacy to pick up my medicine, they uh, give me time to sign when they give me the medications. Well, lucky you, Juanjo. Because for me, I've had it that when I run out of a medicine and I can't stop taking it all at once, and my doctor knew that I was running out because I'd gone to the doctor just yesterday. And she asked if I had all of them medicine that uh they she had given me all the medicines that i needed and she said yes and then i went to the pharmacy and i discovered that they had uh they had uh canceled or or not renewed my prescription and that's a medicine that i can't just stop taking all at once but they didn't tell me that they were going to stop gabriel please you have the floor for me I haven't had any problems with the uh, uh, health workers. Every time I get sick or feel ill, they take me to the emergency room. They look over my body and identify what's happening to me. They attend me well and taking into account and they inform me at the doctor's office. They provide me with uh, with whatever I need to do, like doing a blood test or uh, which kind of uh, medications I need to get. They provide the uh, prescriptions and explain to me what I should take and what I should not. So I've really never had any problem. I've always been very well treated at the doctor's office. All right, so I'd like to thank everyone for their participation. The next conversation will be on September 26th at five o'clock in, uh, in the afternoon Spanish time. And we'll talk about inclusive research. There will also be simultaneous translation between Spanish, English, and Portuguese. And we will send out the uh, participating people and the questions for the next meeting. Before we go, Anna, one moment. Can you just say the date again for the next encounter? Uh, September 26th. September 26th. I have a question, Anna. What about uh, inclusive research? About what? I don't understand. We'll talk about research. Mart, can you explain a little bit more about that? Uh, 
inclusive research. I think we will be talking about uh, how we can find information and uh, concerning uh, people with intellectual disabilities and several drugs, something like that. Yeah, Louis. Did you understand that, Fernanda? Research on where we can get information so that people can have access to correct information. Is that is that it? Yeah. Inclusive in research is also when the people who carry out the investigation are not only university researchers or professors or people like that, but they're also people with intellectual disabilities themselves. Okay, thank you. And now, as always, whoever wants can turn on their camera and we'll take a final photograph of the group, okay? Anyone who would like to participate, please turn on your cameras. Everybody smile, look nice. One. Okay. Thank you. Can we see everyone in the screen? One, two, three, cheese. Please send us that photo by WhatsApp, okay? Thanks to everyone for being here, and we'll see you in September, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Have a great summer. Bye.